Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone to a continuing series of software engineering based or code corner roundtable discussions hosted by the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Information Analysis Center. My name is Cully Patch and I will be the moderator for this podcast. Today we'll be talking about comparisons between C++ and a new programming language called Rust in terms of improvising uh, resilience, survivability of software intensive systems. The DoD IACs are sponsored by the Defense Technical Information Center. One of the IAC objectives is to bring industry, academia, and government personnel together to solve hard technical problems. With the support of DTEC, we are able to organize this code corner discussion to engage subject matter experts from all professions that are addressing the current and future challenges involved in software engineering and cybersecurity. During our time today, our participants talk about goals and ground rules of today's exchange, followed by covering some of the key concepts discussed during the comparison. Then they will uh, uh, discuss performance comparisons based on several parameters, followed by the results and conclusions, and finally wrap up with a, a Q&A session as time permits. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, two software engineer architects subject matter experts, Dr. Jim Fawcett and Mr. Mike Corley to talk about comparing C++ with Rust. Dr. James Fawcett is a teaching professor emeritus of computer engineering at Syracuse University. He has extensive experience in industry and academia. From 1991 to May 2019, Dr. Fawcett taught a sequence of graduate and software design courses focused on methods and strategies for design, development, and management of large complex distributed software systems. Prior to that, he worked in various roles for General Electric to include advanced engineering training assignments, system engineering and electronics laboratory, development and manager of radar systems department. He also taught as an adjunct in a variety of graduate electrical engineering courses at Syracuse University. Mike Corley is a R&D associate at Quantarian Solutions. He supports a variety of Fund, uh, funded efforts with the uh, DTIC via the CSIAC and the Air Force Research Laboratory in Rome, New York. Mike has more than 20 years of ex professional experience in software architecture design and development. Mike has a master's degree in computer engineering from Syr Syracuse University in 2011. His interests include cloud-enabled architectures, software development methodologies, and collaborating with enthusiasts on programming language idioms, design patterns, and related ideas. Mike especially enjoys developing code in C++, C Sharp, .NET Core, now .NET 5, and has recently been uh, working with the Rust programming language. Good morning, gentlemen, and thank you for your time today here. Um, I would thank like to, that. awesome. I would uh, like to ha I'll turn this over to Dr. Fawcett for some ground rules and then having a little individual uh, intro and off we go. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Cully. Uh, Mike and I are really pleased to be here this morning. Um, uh, we both have a lot of experience with C++, like C++, uh, like the C++ programming language. But recently, we've gotten interested in Rust uh, because of its uh, guarantees that it can make about uh, memory access uh, validity and um, uh, verify that there are no data races. Uh, we won't get into all the details of how that happens here. Our goal today is to make a comparison between uh, C++ and Rust for a practical, uh, pragmatic design problem, uh, something similar to the kinds of things that uh, developers build uh, as part of their daily work. Uh, so this isn't just a toy example. Uh, it's a real system. Uh, so, uh, what we what we decided to do uh, was to build message passing communicators uh, that rely on sockets under the covers, uh, and so we're building a communication system uh, that uh, does uh, synchronous message passing back and forth between a, a connector and a um, receiver, a listener, and. Uh, uh, you know, 
it uses, uh, I think I said the underlying uh, sockets from the, from the individual platforms. The interesting thing about both Rust and C++ is that uh, we can build systems effectively in many different uh, platforms. Um, Linux and, and uh, Windows are uh, examples. And you'll see some, um, some evidence of that in the work we did uh, for this comparison. So what we wanted to do uh, was we wanted to make uh, these two designs, they're two different designs, but we wanted to make them as similar as we could within, uh, you know, practical constraints, you know, that we're implementing with two different languages. Mike implemented uh, what he calls message passing library, uh, MPL in C++, and I implemented what I call RustCom, Rust communication in the Rust programming language. Uh, but the structure of the uh, communication uh, processing is very, very similar. We're doing the same kinds of things. So uh, what we want to do is we want to compare uh, performance and complexity and the ease of construction and code size and safety and so on. Uh, and uh, for that, we had some ground rules. Um, so these designs are going to be as, as uh, similar as we can practically make them. Uh, they're synchronous with full duplex sockets for client and server uh, communication. Uh, they both use thread pools on the server end to avoid thrashing when we have uh, uh, lots and lots of connection requests and uh, lots and lots of connections to process. Uh, we limit the number of threads that are spawned with a thread pool. Uh, and so that allows us to uh, keep the server processors, the uh, multiple cores on the uh, uh, servers, uh, almost fully loaded, but without a lot of context switching. Uh, the uh, messages are they're variable sized messages with a uh, fixed header size with a couple of things in the header and a body, variable body size. It might be, you know, it could be binary or it could be text or whatever. Uh, our server processing simply echoes client messages back. Uh, the designs will support, the design supports much more complex uh, uh, server operations, but we chose to uh, just do echo servers uh, uh, for the comparison. Uh, the project used the standard libraries from each of the uh, languages, but doesn't use third-party uh, uh, libraries. For example, um, uh, the C++, Mike C++ implementation doesn't use the boost libraries. Uh, and uh, the Rust implementation that I did doesn't use any of the third party. There's a lot of third party software available on a site called crates.io and I uh, uh, could have, but uh, elected not to use any of that. We wanted to make a comparison of just our own work uh, you know, um, trying to implement these these goals as well as we could. Uh, the C++ code that Mike wrote uh, uses the modern C++ uh, 17 constructs, and those support safe data handling uh, by, uh, by construction. Rust enforces memory and data raise safety at compile time by, um, uh, by, by construction. So C++ supports it by convention, Rust supports it by construction at compile time. Uh, the Rust code doesn't use any unsafe blocks. Uh, Rust has a facility that allows you to escape for performance reasons or data flow reasons or whatever. You can escape from the uh, uh, mechanics that uh, support uh, memory safety and data raise safety. But um, I wanted to show that you don't have to use unsafe blocks uh, for even for quite interesting, complex problems. So uh, I have used no unsafe blocks here. There are some unsafe blocks in the library code, uh, but uh, all of that is very thoroughly vetted. You know, uh, been many, many, many eyes have looked at it, and it's wrapped in safe wrappers. So uh, all of that is um, code that all of this code is um, uh, safe by construction. Very cool. Uh, and this code, uh, both Mike's C++ code and my uh, 
uh, Rust code will build on both Windows and Linux, and we may try to uh, implement it on uh, Mac OS uh, sometime. We haven't done that yet, but uh, we have implemented it, and you'll, we'll see data today from both Windows and Linux. Very cool. Uh, and the implementations, uh, we didn't take extraordinary measures to eke out the last little bit of performance. Our goal was to, uh, to compare business as usual construction, you know, careful, professional, but otherwise business as usual construction. So we're not sitting here uh, fine tuning, tweaking stuff for, for performance. Okay. Okay. Very good. So, yeah, let me get rid of this. Uh, by the way, I put this up here so that uh, should you be unable to read uh, some of the, the slide material, uh, this is a uh, link to the to the page that we're looking at, and everything we're going to talk about this morning is on this page. Very good, thank you. Okay, so Mike, why don't you uh, uh, start off and uh, take us through the uh, C plus plus communicator? Sure, Doc. Thank you. And the, the message passing layer, the the acronym there, MPL, stands for just as it sounds. It's a library framework, and the idea there is really. To twofold, to encapsulate or to represent in a higher level abstraction, synchronous socket communication with a message passing interface. So you can build flexibly more complex uh, uh, applications or systems that require a messaging back and forth. And there's lots of applications for that. If you wanted something that would be efficient and lightweight and, and have a real flexible interface that can be reused, that's the first part. And the real second part of it is to be as compatible as it can with the interfaces of the corresponding RustCom that you had done, Dr. Foster. And that gave us, gave us an opportunity to explore a number of different uh, differences and aspects, similarities and differences between the two paradigms. So what you see here, uh, this is the basic class diagram structure that encapsulates the design. Uh, it, you'll find it's very similar to what Dr. Fawcett did in the RustCom to the right, which I'll show you. But uh, you know, one interesting thing that you'll see about this, that the basic components are, it, it has a, a, a TCP connector as a main class. That's how you establish connections on the client side. And you have a, a TCP responder, which encapsulates and wraps the server side. And that's where you get the, the, the responsiveness of the server servicing client requests with a thread pool and, and so on and so forth. And these are fairly sophisticated uh, channels, communication channels. They support uh, message-based communication with queues and, and direct messaging without queues, and they're highly extensible. Uh, one thing that is interesting in the C++ version, C, the currently as of C++ 20, likely coming in C++ 23, there isn't a socket library that's available. There is one in Rust, so I wanted to build one that encapsulated the differences between uh, Windows-specific platforms and Linux platforms to give you a higher level facility to handle for you the, the, the socket level uh, interactions. So that was an interesting difference and we'll talk more about that. But that's the basic idea, a flexible, lightweight messaging facility. So thank you, Doc. Yeah. So uh, the Rust facility is very, very similar. Um, there are, uh, there are uh, a connector and a listener that corresponds to uh, uh, Mike's uh, uh, connector and responder. A thread pool, just like the C++ uh, design. Uh, instead of using sockets and building a library around the sockets, Rust provides a uh, uh, TCP stream library, and I'm using T uh, TCP listener and TCP streams to communicate uh, there's just, you know, there's sockets underneath. Uh, uh, it's a, a very nice, uh, easy to use facility in Rust. Uh, and I have a, uh, the connector is uh, uh, parameterized. It's a generic uh, component parameterized on processing, messaging, and logging. And the listener uh, is uh, parameterized on processing and logging. And uh, they both uh, use messages. And uh, what you see up here are something called traits. They're, you can think of them like Java interfaces. Uh, uh, they uh, uh, mandate a set of functions that the processor must use, the connector must use, the listener must use, 
uh, you know, they're all using these uh, 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 processors that uh, that support these kinds of operations. So uh, conceptually, uh, you know, the flow and the ideas are very, very similar to MPL. Uh, the implementation is significantly different, uh, but uh, the spirit is really the same. We're doing the same kind of things. We're both, you know, full duplex, uh, socket sending back and forth, the same kind of messages. We have very, uh, <clears throat> very, our messaging structure is uh, virtually the same. And, uh, uh, you know, we're both using thread pools and so on. And, and Doc, I'll just add, so much so is the messaging format the same that uh, we can get Rust and C++ to talk to each other. We haven't done that specific task, but you certainly can mix and match the two pieces because the messaging source. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we don't, we don't uh, anticipate any real problems doing that. So, Well, that's about all the time we have for this podcast, but stay tuned for part two of this three-part series where we cover the comparison of Rust versus C++ in the following areas performance, size and complexity, safety, and ease of maintenance. For more detailed podcasts on Rust as well as C++ programming language, please enter the terms CSIAC and Rust into your search engine or browse to our main site at https colon slash slash www.csiac.org. Have a great day. Did you know that CSIAC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? Come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars.